What do you think of when you hear the word lasers? Perhaps a disco? Your lecturer's laser pointer? Or maybe that sci-fi film with monsters shooting lasers from their eyes? There are many different uses for lasers and one Singaporean research group found a new inventive way to use them. In 2006, a Singaporean research group published a paper which detailed the use of lasers to form nanoparticles from palladium metal complexes via a photochemical decomposition pathway. But first, what is a nanoparticle? As the name suggests, a nanoparticle is a very, very small particle made up of a group of atoms that have clumped together. This particle has a diameter between 1 and 100 nanometers. Because of their tiny size, they have a lot of unique properties that are different from the properties of their bulk materials. One of these properties is the vibrant colour of nanoparticles in solution. A phenomenon known as localised surface plasmon resonance, or LSPR, is responsible for these colours. LSPR occurs because the nanoparticles have a smaller diameter than the wavelength of visible light. This means that they have different interaction with the visible light than their bulk materials do. Now, back to the lasers. How can they be used to produce nanoparticles? Lasers emit a high intensity beam of visible light, which is a type of electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength of 400 to 800 nanometers. When directed at metal complexes in solution, the laser provides enough energy to cause the complexes to decompose, leaving free palladium metal atoms and free ligands. The free palladium metal atoms clump together to form spherical metal cores in a process known as aggregation. These tiny metal cores are much denser than most nanoparticles produced by other methods, such as thermal decomposition, which uses heat to decompose the metal complexes. The reason for this is that photochemical decomposition triggered by a laser occurs much faster than thermal decomposition so many more metal atoms are released at once. This results in a dense metal core. In the 2006 paper, the researchers left the nanoparticle solutions at room temperature after laser treatment which allowed the remaining metal complexes in solution to decompose thermally. The palladium atoms released by thermal decomposition stuck or adsorbed to the surface of the metal cores produced by laser decomposition, which formed a shell layer that was less dense than the metal core. If the metal complexes in solution are exposed to the laser for a long time, then all the metal complexes will decompose to form dense metal cores and none will be left to thermally decompose at room temperature and form the shell. In contrast, if the complexes aren't treated with lasers, then only thermal decomposition can occur. This forms aggregates which have no metal cores. There is a spectrum in between these two extremes, which enables the size of the shell layer to be controlled by changing the length of time that the metal complexes are exposed to the laser. In the 2006 paper, complexes containing palladium in zero oxidation state were used. This is a significant advantage above many other strategies since no reducing agent is required. In most other strategies involving a decomposition of metal complexes, the metal atoms in the complexes are in an oxidized state. This means that they are electron poor. 
A reducing agent is needed to donate electrons to the metal atoms so that they will return to a zero oxidation or neutral state. If they are not in a zero oxidation state, then they will not be attracted to each other and will not form nanoparticles, but will remain either as free ions in solution or be part of a complex. Now that we have made our metal nanoparticles, how can we use them? Nanoparticles have many applications in everyday life. A wide range of metal nanoparticles are used in medications, such as cadmium sulfide and iron oxide nanoparticles, which are used to deliver the active ingredient of drugs to cells. Silver nanoparticles have been used in socks because of their antibacterial properties, which stops the socks from smelling by killing the bacteria. Titanium dioxide nanoparticles are used in sunscreen to absorb UV radiation. And gold nanoparticles have been used in red stained glass for centuries. There are so many uses for nanoparticles and the list keeps growing.